And the Philippines has become the first country to close its financial markets in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The unprecedented move is to ensure the safety of traders. Now, the Philippines stock exchange is closed until further notice, while currency and bond trading, that too has been suspended. But the exchange is hoping to reopen on Thursday. Now, global markets have slumped as the coronavirus spreads and the Philippines, well, it hasn't been exempt from any of that turmoil. Its benchmark index is down 20%. For the month so far, that's the worst performance since 2008. Now, this comes as half the country's population remains locked down, with the whole of Luzon placed under enhanced community quarantine. All those on the island must stay home and avoid unnecessary travel. Work and transport services have also been halted, although essential services are still operating. All international flights, meantime, to and from the island, they're going to stop from Friday. The Philippines has reported 140. COVID-19 cases and a dozen deaths. Buena Brunel joins us live now from Manila for more. Buena, the Philippines has declared a state of calamity just this past hour. What does this mean for the country? Well, the declaration will allow government expedited access to funds that will support the containment effort. That proclamation signed by Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea says that those funds will likewise be used to provide basic necessities to the affected population. And this is in line with the messaging employed by Philippines Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nobrales during that Monday late night press conference after President Rodrigo Duterte addressed the nation when he said trying to assuage the public uh, negative sentiments over the quarantine, he said that uh, they could just treat this like a calamity. But of course, that is a bitter pill to swallow for many Filipinos. Now, the country experiences an average of 20 typhoons each year, so localities are very familiar with natural disasters that disrupts daily lives, lead to economic losses. But there has been concern over the staggered communication of these rules of the quarantine uh, that has led to confusion and also susceptibility to misinformation. Lo local reports, for example, are saying that health workers were forced to walk long distances because of that lack of public transportation, the same experience for business process, outsourcing uh, industry workers because uh, their operations uh, remain amid this quarantine. Uh, th uh, the same experiences by uh, some of the informal sector workers who were stranded and who were uh, planning to go back to their provinces outside of Metro Manila. Um, of course, the government has since said that they will continue to review and uh, consider uh, revising those guidelines. For example, the, the government said it has partnered with a uh, transportation organization to ferry stranded passengers. Likewise, the vice president said she will be providing transportation for health workers. Uh, but uh, these nuances, uh, realities on the ground seem to have not been anticipated. There's that criticism on the lack of foresight. So, Bunel, you mentioned there about this confusion. How have people been reacting to this um, enhanced community quarantine then? Well, there's been concern because this uh, enhanced community quarantine will likewise uh, be for the rest of the month. And um, the declaration of a state of calamity, uh, according to the proclamation uh, released uh, Tuesday, was that uh, it will last for six months unless lifted or extended. Uh, that means that the funds that will be tapped will likewise go to rehabilitation for those uh, displaced in their jobs, for example, due to this month-long suspension of mass transportation, suspension of work as well. All right. Thanks for that update. Buenabinal, speaking to us from Manila.